It's Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz, and we are at the California State Association of Counties Convention in Palm Springs, not far from Imperial County. We're joined by a supervisor from that beautiful region. His name is John Rennison. And, sir, you uh, derive or you hail from the border region. That's right. Calexico and Winter Haven, right. all the way to the Yuma, Arizona border. So let's talk about that yeah, region. That sure. region has done fairly well in large part because of increased trade with the passage of NAFTA and otherwise. I mean, there are issues, but as a general proposition, has NAFTA been of benefit to that region? It has been a benefit, Brad. There's no question about it. If NAFTA were to go away, we'd lose hundreds and thousands of jobs, not only in the border region on the Mexican side, but in the interior of Mexico. And I know it's hard to understand. If you're from the Midwest, if you lost your job right. in the automotive industry, it's really hard to explain. But we, we just can't uh, be against globalization. But would we lose jobs on the American side of the border? We would. Now, Here's the twist. We cannot compete with wages on the American side right. of Mexico. You know, your minimum wage in Mexico is like $10, $12 a day. Okay. Now, is that right? No, of course but not. But it is what it is. They're creating thousands of jobs. Those folks don't have a job otherwise. The informal economy is unbelievable in Mexico. You have taco vendors, you have hot dog vendors. They don't have a livable wage. The people work in factories have uh, socialized medicine, they have transportation, they have babysitting, and they have a wage. They're not living high, but they're living. And, and you know, let's get back to the border now. With uh, the increased uh, watch on the border and the increased vigilance and all of that, that hurts our economy too because we're all presumed to be coming into the United States illegally, you know, right. there's the assumption, reasons. there's an assumption. So if you come to the border and you don't have any kind of identification, uh, you're questioned and all that, and that's fine. But, but I want to uh, ask you more about trade because, yeah. look, there's no question that the president-elect used the trade issue extremely effectively, especially in the upper Midwest. He did. Michigan, he did. Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, I mean, one could argue he won those states because he was hammering against NAFTA. That's correct. Now, do you have a sense as to whether those arguments that NAFTA is shipping jobs to Mexico and to Canada, it, it, is that what you're saying in that border region? The argument has always been made that we're losing jobs in the states because of the jobs created offshore. Partially true. However, there's job created in the United States that would have not been created otherwise. A lot of these places would have not would have closed down completely in the United States because they can't afford the production costs. So they moved to Mexico. I think it's better than moving to China, quite frankly. Right. If they're right at our back door or right at our front door. So that's kind of the argument there. It's a very complicated issue. Well, but I so, think right, if you study the issue, I think that there's more benefit than there is any negative impact, quite frankly. So if we do see more restrictive trade policies, if NAFTA is renegotiated or goes away. If we start imposing more stringent trade policy vis-a-vis -vis China, I mean, I think about the Long Beach and Los Angeles ports. If all of a sudden imports and exports drop, that will impact, let's call it West California. Mm -hmm. If we have NAFTA being restricted, that would uh, restrict East California, let's call it. This could be a perfect storm for some real trouble. That's right, because, you know, a lot of your raw material and products that you're assembling in Mexico, remember, they're importing raw material, unassembled goods, they're assembling them in Mexico and shipping them back to the U.S. for consumption or what have you. Okay. So if we were to stop free trade, you'd stop the imports from China to Mexico and to the U.S., and it would create just so, a real problem. So what do you do? I mean, you are a booster of trade. Yes. You're representative, I believe, by Juan Vargas. That's right. You're a member of U.S. Congress. That's He's right. a Democrat. That's correct. I mean... I, I can imagine you speaking to the incoming administration about your concerns, but I can also imagine them ignoring you because, I mean, look, trade was an issue that yeah. Trump ran on and he won. That's right. We have to be very vocal. We can't be quiet about this. And yes, there's concern. And I think that me personally, I'm an independent. I'll work with anybody. Of course, but we've got to be global in our thinking. We've got to convince those folks that's in D.C. Mr. Trump proposed. I mean, that was not his message. His message was so clearly, look inward. He railed against globalization. He did, Brad. But listen, doesn't hasn't he backtracked on a lot and backpedaled on a lot of this stuff? No, not totally. But I think that he's got to face reality here. And he, if he's got good advisors that you know, know the globalization and know, you know, these guys that are but in commerce and stuff. But you believe his supporters will stand by if he backtracks? There's got to be, there's got to be a uh, middle ground, don't you think? 
I think that's where it's at. We're mm -hmm. not going to win a we're not going to win a war. You know, we might win the battle, and we've got to we've got to negotiate, and we've got to compromise. I think that's what it's all Let's about. Let's talk about immigration, sure. because there's no doubt that in the Calexico border region. Uh, many individuals are of Latino descent, Correct. Uh, whether they're documented or undocumented, we don't know. But what we do know is that the Latino community is in a real panic right now. I mean, are. there are a lot of they folks, uh, my daughter's best friend's mother is a principal at a middle school in inner city Los Angeles. They're having difficulty educating because so many kids are either undocumented or have undocumented family. Well, let's take DACA, for instance. DACA. The, DACA. You know, there's, there's kids that are worried. I think they'll be grandfathered in, Well, let's quite talk frankly. about that. I mean, look, you know? DACA was very clear. It, it protected dreamers. It did. But now you have a Trump administration in possession mm -hmm. of every dreamer's name, address, social security number, phone number, color of hair, eyes, I mean, that's the first place one could go for deportation. The list is right there. I agree with you, but I think, once again, we've got to compromise, we can't be extreme. Now, you're right, he is extreme in his views, that is troubling, but there's got to be a way we can get to these folks who are advising him and, and to make our argument, because if the border doesn't speak up, they do trade missions all the time back east, and some of them are successful, some aren't. For instance, port of entry funding, it's always an issue, but if you've got your head screwed on, doesn't it make sense if you had border infrastructure, it'd be increased security and efficiency, get people in and out more well, efficiently, talk, and more spending in the United well, States? Well, let's talk about the border, yeah. because Mr. Trump has said he wants to build a wall. Right. Is there a wall right now in Imperial County? There is not a wall. There is a sophisticated fence. They call it the Douglas fence, because okay. it's got bars you can see through, actually. You can almost shake somebody's hand. There is no wall in well, Calexico. Are you ready to have cruise, construct a wall? Do you think it's going to happen? That's the question. I mean, look, again, you know, Mr. Trump has been very clear. He wants to build a wall. There's not a lot of backtracking on that. I mean, on registering Muslims, maybe he's backtracked on, oh, I don't know, some other issues, maybe he's backtracked, but not on that one. I don't see it, it happening, quite I mean, frankly. I mean, who's going to pay for it? That's right. That's right. Who's going to pay for it? Is Congress going to vote for something like that? They would say, what about the uh, $8 billion fiasco they had in Texas? Remember that? In Arizona, it never got built because of some fiasco and there was a glitch. What are your friends on the Mexican side of the border saying? Very concerned. They're very concerned with the trade issue. They're very concerned with the direction the United States is going. Uh, there's a lot of apprehension all along the border, both sides of the border. So where does Imperial County go from here? Because your population centers are at the border, even though That's you're right. a large county That's geographically, right. you're That's really... Right. We're, we're locked into the border. My district is the smallest geographically, uh -huh. but it's the largest in population concentration. Right. People are right on the border there where I am, whereas the other uh, districts of my colleagues right. are bigger areas sure. with limited population. We've got to get serious about this border thing. The border has always been a stepchild, Brad. Right. Any way you cut it, any administration comes in doesn't understand the border. And you got congressmen from Ohio and Wisconsin and all those places, they don't have a clue. They'll right. say, back up that traffic nine hours, who cares, you know, vehicular traffic. Brad, you're talking about two and a half, three hour backups to get ac across the border in the United States at Tijuana and Calexico if you don't have a sentry pass, which is the, uh, you know what the sentry pass is. Mm -hmm. preferred. Pass, That's correct. And it takes me 20 minutes, let's say, on a bad day or 30. But most people don't have that. There's people commuting in the United States legally to work in El Centro, Brawley, from Mexicali, two in the morning to go to work at six. His name is John Renison. He is a supervisor in Imperial County. We're at the CSAC Convention in Palm Springs today. My name is Brad Palmer. Thank you for joining us on Charter Local Edition. My pleasure. Was it okay? I, I just... Was it okay? I'm mortified. I'm sorry? I'm mortified. Why? By what's going on. Oh.